and welcome back to the channel guys today we're gonna be doing my top 10 favorite second chance slash returner manhwa before i start i have four honorable mentions and this is because i don't want to put them near the top of my list because they're in way too many lists the first solo leveling you know it character gets a second chance of life after falling in a dungeon and the great adventure that is so leveling begins. Great Mage returns after 4,000 years. A character is locked away for 4,000 years after fighting against the demigods and then gets his chance to get his revenge or to finally defeat the demigods by taking control of a person and his body by basically having his soul inhabit him. There's a little bit more to it, but it's definitely worth checking out as well. The beginning after the end, which is Isekai Gold highest quality you can find in the mono world. Very manga-like in a lot of ways. You'll find it much more similar to a thing like Mushoku Tensei than you'll find it similar to most other manhwa out there. But it's also hard to call it a manhwa. There's some little nuance there. More a web a webcomic than anything else. And of course, leveling with the gods, which is a character and his party that reach the top of a tower only to see that they're unable to defeat the enemy that they wanted to. One of their characters sends the main protagonist back in time to climb the tower once more, but this time become stronger, quicker, and achieve so much more so that they can finally defeat the big bad of their world. And that's kind of it for honorable mentions. Let's jump right into the list. And number 10 is the eight, Return of the Eight Circle Mage, a manhwa that I have crapped on a little bit, not gonna lie. It has really good art, it has kind of bad pacing. The storyline of a character wanting revenge after reaching a certain strength level and the royal family that he serves feeling threatened is not something entirely original, but it's one that I've always enjoyed as an idea. It's actually another one on this list, has a very similar premise. The only thing about this story is I'm not sure it entirely knows what type of series it's trying to be. There are moments where it's definitely more on the action side as it shows off its interesting magic, but the most, the biggest part is kind of a political manipulation slash uh, who, which side am I going to be on in order to challenge the side that betrayed me in my previous life, which is great, except most of the time neither of them is quite as good as it should be. That being said, I still think it's worth reading, it's great visuals, a good storyline, an interesting bunch of characters, and a general fun. At number 9 is Memorize. This mod was pretty darn good, honestly. I don't know why I didn't put it higher on this list, but it's maybe just because I like the other ones better, and that's kind of the reality of it. Memorize follows a character that kind of achieved his objective. He beat the final boss, he got the, the, the reward for having accomplished his quest. But the thing is, he lost so many people along the way. So many people had to perish for him to get what he needed that he finally decided that, you know what, no, send me back in time so that I can do this again, so that I can save the people that sacrifice themselves and I don't need to face the world of success alone. And he does exactly that. And the build-up is an interesting one. This happens in the same universe as Second Coming of Gluttony, uh, but I think it's a much better series, to be perfectly honest. If I was going to put a Second Coming of Gluttony, I would put it like at number 17 on this list. I don't think it's complete trash. The only thing is it doesn't deliver on the promise of what it offered originally. At number 8 is Return of the Crazy Demon, and I feel bad for putting this one at number 8 because this one used to be so much higher on my list. I should have seen it coming, though. The reality is Return of the Crazy Demon is still doing the great things it did initially, right now. The only thing is, it's gotten a little old. The craziness of the main character, the I don't give a crap about the big plan kind of mindset, I'm just gonna go defeat the guy myself, and the way he treats his subordinates, it was hilarious at first, and I was really enjoying it, but it's getting a little old. That being said, the visuals are still on point. The overarching combat and battle styles in this story are really good, and the comedy does hit pretty well. So. I'm still enjoying it, it's still worth checking out, but I don't think that the longer it goes, I think the more the type and style of the story is gonna get a little grating. Something that Magic Emperor didn't quite go through, because Magic Emperor is, he's the man with the plan. This guy is the man without the plan. He's might have a big picture plan, but eh, the execution is a little br blue. Brunt force trauma, if you will. At number seven is God of Blackfield. The funny thing is, I don't think I would have put God of Blackfield up there that high before. I had originally dropped the story after the first arc because someone had told me who the villain of the second arc was, and it kind of killed my motivation for reading the story. 
But I jumped back into it later because people told me it was still really good. And they were right. I think God Black feels fantastic. I also think it does some things a little bit more interestingly than Mercenary Roman. I think Mercenary Roman overall is a better story. However, the main character here being someone that lived a previous life as a soldier adds one extra dynamic, and that is he's more talkative and he has a little bit more life experience that he leverages in the story. Uh, for sure, similarly, soldier, they, they, they're both badasses, but this guy talks a lot more. And as similar, as simple as that is, it really increases the enjoyment of it for me. And I think uh, this is one of the strong suits. The combat in school is fantastic. The overarching story is good. And you get a lot more of that school beat down mindset in this one, which is a lot of fun. At number six is Return of the Legendary Spear Knight. This one used to be higher on my list before as well. But the reality is Return of the Legendary Spear Knight had me really excited for when the time jump was gonna take place and he was gonna be a bit older. And sure enough, that time jump finally came and I didn't enjoy it very much. Unfortunately, the time jump skipped at an intro at a kind of a weird place for me. We didn't get to see a lot of really important character relationship dynamics being created with him becoming like the leader of a group. He just we kind of just had him going into a school and leaving the school during the time jump and it positioned us in a way where we kind of aren't bought into this bigger plot that we're going into right now. At least I'm not yet. I'm hoping that I get back into it a little bit in a few weeks when the story kind of brings everything together and I get me a bit more of a big picture perspective and they're still building a lot of pieces. But I feel like it should have been a more natural succession of plots rather than things just kind of like, it's basically like we're starting a new manhwa in a lot of ways. At number five is Chronicles of Heavenly Demon. And I know five, this is really low to put this series. This is some people's favorite manhwa out there right now. The reality is I haven't had as much fun with it actually since it expanded. I, I found it really cool that they did that. I think the overarching story is a masterpiece in all honesty of revenge in particular. But seeing a character get like betrayed and have a second chance to come back and he's at the bottom, bottom of the heap and he has to climb and claw his way back up the echelons and become stronger to get revenge on those that killed him and his master is a, a common idea a little bit, but it's done with such quality and hard work that the character not only just leverages his strength from the past, he learns so many new skills that make him such a threat for everyone else. And I think that they've done that so, so well in this series. That being said, I think that the fact that his quest for revenge never leaves and that when he when he grows to the, the peaks of where he leads, he just gains more objectives where he wants to elevate those around him and protect those around him at the same time. But I think it's great that he never gave up on that quest for revenge. So this is my number five. And number four is Returner's Magic Should Be Special. I know it's not loved as much as the previous one. The reality is I just have a lot of fun with it. Desir Arma and his little clan of groups of people are, are fun to me. They're interesting to see grow. I like the ensemble cast of this one, in spite of them annoying me at first. They also have a feel a little bit of manga-like uh, groups that we see a lot. Um, I've said this before on this channel, but I'm not a big fan of ensembles generally. Like That's the one thing about like One Piece or Tower of God. They never quite work for me. I only care about the protagonist. But the funny thing is, because a lot of the fights are team fights in this series, I actually enjoy them quite a bit in this. And when there is like fights of other characters versus other characters, they're short-lived, so I don't have to spend 20 chapters on a side character that I don't care that much about, which, I mean, that might change in the future, who knows, but for the time being, that's kind of been the case, and I really enjoy it. At number three is Damn Reincarnation. And I know, putting a series that's this young so high on a list is a risky thing, because tomorrow morning it could fall off of a cliff and become a pile of garbage. But Damn Reincarnation is doing some things that make me excited for it as a series. Uh, I think it's leaning a little bit on its manga roots of a much more developed world and storytelling. And it isn't just about a revenge story. Actually, it's not even a revenge story. It's more about uncovering what happened and the mysteries of a past life. But the way things are being uncovered, the way the relationships were built with nuance is impressive writing. Um, having the cousin if you're up to date on the series, turn into a bit of a, a person suffering with addiction is something that's very new. Like, it's not something you cross a lot in these type of fantasy manhwa. 
and I found the storytelling in general to be peak, not to mention the visuals are freaking amazing in this series. So I'm really optimistic that this manhwa will reach the... And number two is Infinite Leveling in Murum, and honestly, I have loved this manhwa since I started reading it at the beginning. The art style is not the nicest thing out there. I like it. I enjoy it. I think it's good for showing the movement and the fights. I don't think it's the best at it by, at all. But what I really like is the quest the main character has gone on. The concept of the story. Uh, a soldier that basically rose up a little bit in the ranks. He led his team. He faced his end because the generals were cowards. Because those that led humans were those that unfortunately were born with privilege and because he was not he was basically cannon fodder sent to the front lines but his his second life is less about him avoiding becoming cannon fodder and making sure that others won't and he wants to make sure that he can become a person that will prevent others from like basically ending their lives because and the fights and the development of this character are so good if you're not checking out Infinite Leveling Murim, you should definitely do it. It's really good. And uh, number one is Return of the Blossoming Blade, or Return of the Mount Hua Sect. A character is sent forward a hundred years in time after perishing, defeating the great evil of his period. Um, what's interesting about this one is that it's a lot of comedy, and at the same time, the fights are phenomenal, the world building is great, the visuals are on point. But again, this is another one that I feel I get some vibes of manga from, of that youngish character that's very comedic, that's kind of hiding what he's doing from others around him while he's kind of like facilitating and being a badass at the same time that's recognized by a small circle of people as being this badass. And that circle is getting larger and larger and larger. I really enjoy it because the main character is this lazy doesn't want to do the work, but obviously does a ton of work anyway kind of mindset, and it's been phenomenal to read so far. If you haven't, check out this video right here. Like and subscribe to the channel will be really appreciated, and with that, guys, have a great day.